Hey guys, Spud here, as always, and today we're taking a look at the most significant change to the F-15E Strike Eagle in the latest update, with the addition of AGR or air-to-ground ranging to the AN-APG-70 radar that will allow us to accurately use our gun in air-to-ground strafing runs. So let's jump in and get started. Okay guys and gals, here we are back in the cockpit of the F-15E Strike Eagle. And I am so excited today because we finally get to fly over the newly added portions of Northern Jordan to the DCS Syria map. In fact, just below our aircraft here, we have King Abdullah II Air Base, one of a few different additions of air bases to the Syria map which is really just like another cherry on top of what is in my opinion already the crown jewel of DCS world. So we can see that airbase down there below us, and we'll jump right on in to talking about how to employ your M61A1 Vulcan cannon in the air-to-ground strafing role here in your F-15E Strike Eagle. So we'll go ahead and get our nose pointed on back towards our IP point here. And we'll get the autopilot turned back on to reduce our pilot workload as we work through the systems together. Of course, the first thing we need to do when setting up for a strafing run is to select our air to ground gun. Now, this is a little bit more complicated, a bit more involved, and a bit more confusing than what you're probably used to in the F-16C or F-A-18C. First, we need to go to Air to Ground Master Mode on our UFC here, pretty simple enough. And then we need to go to our PACS programs and select a clean PAC program. So go to our armament page, Air to Ground submenu, and we can see program one here already has our six GBU-38s selected. Let's see how many more times we can say selected in our video today. So we'll go ahead and scroll over to program two, and we can see program two here is a clean program with none of our air-to-ground munitions currently selected. This is important because you won't be able to select your air-to-ground gun if you're on a program that has any air-to-ground munitions currently selected. Next, we need to take command of our HUD. We do this by pressing Castle Switch to press short and Castle Switch forward short in quick succession. Let's do it now. Boop, boop, and boom. We now have in command displayed on the left hand side of the HUD, letting us know that we have command of the HUD. Finally, all we have to do is go auto acquisition switch aft. We know we have our air to ground gun selected when we can see the number of rounds remaining on the left hand side of the HUD, as well as see the air to ground gun reticle on the bottom part of the field of view of our HUD. At this point, feel free to go ahead and close the video because this is all you need to do to get your air to ground gun selected. But we're going to go through a more or less realistic strafing run in mountainous terrain here at our F-15E Strike Eagle. So we'll go ahead and enter into a bit of a hold here as we anchor just to the southeast of our IP point. Go ahead and bank our jet a little bit here. And we'll turn our autopilot back on. All right. We've been pre-briefed by our JTAC on our target today. We've got a Danger Close Tick, or Danger Close Troops in Contact, in an Acropolis to the northwest of Amman, Jordan. Some ISIS-aligned militants are in a firefight with Jordanian security forces, and we're required to use our gun today due to proximity to civilians, friendly troops, and the culturally sensitive area this firefight is taking place in. So, we already know that we're going to be in mountainous terrain for the strafing run, so as a result of that, we're going to utilize a 25 to 30 degree dive angle down onto the target. 
we're also going to ensure that we recover from the strafing run at 1,000 feet AGL or higher. To help us with that, I'm going to go ahead and put 1,200 in the scratch pad here and change our low altitude warning to 1,200 feet AGL. That way, we'll get a 200 foot buffer, so that way in case we forget, or we get distracted or target fixated, we'll know to start a recovery by at least 1200 feet AGL so we can pull out by 1000 feet AGL. Next, I'm gonna to go to the data pad here, and then I'm going to set our radar altimeter up onto our HUD here. Currently, the F-15E lacks a ranging function to our air-to-ground gun reticle, and our radar altimeter will help us determine when we're in range of the target. In a strafing run, the M61A1 Vulcan cannon has a maximum range of 10,000 feet. However, I would only go triggered down once I'm inside of that maximum range. Next, I'm going to go ahead and open up the targeting pod to give us a little bit more situational awareness on where our target is. Keep in mind that you can take command of any display in the aircraft and you will still have your air to ground gun selected. You just need to have the HUD in command in order to select the air to ground gun. So we'll slave our pod to our target area and we'll zoom her on in. Our friendlies are marked by green smoke, so we should be able to see them and keep track of them very, very easily. They're going to be to the northeast of our targets, and our targets will be to the southwest. Our JTAC's instructions today have been to be in to the target from the southeast, a final attack heading between 300 and 310, and to be out to the northwest, and any further reattacks will follow those same instructions. It's also important to note that we're going to be deep within the manpad WES on this attack run, so we're going to be pre-flaring and ensuring we're also dumping flares on our way out from the target area, so that way we can prevent a lock-on from a manpad system, and then hopefully decoy away any launches that are at us. Alright, so looks like we can see our target area down there. And it looks like that might be our smoke marker. So our targets are probably somewhere in this general area. All right, let's go ahead and fence in. And I'm going to elect to keep my position and anti-collision lights on since we're flying over nominally friendly territory and there are a number of friendly coalition aircraft around us as well as civil aircraft here over Jordan. We've got plenty of fuel. Our ECM and countermeasure systems in the back seat are set and ready to go and we are cleared hot. So let's go ahead and head on in and attack our target. Try to get eyes onto our target here, and then we'll set up and maneuver our aircraft in a way that will allow us to conform to our JTAC's restrictions on our attack headings. There it is, perfect. Get a little bit closer here. For our roll-in today, I'm probably going to climb into the roll-in to help ensure that we get a nice steep dive angle onto the target. Not only is a steeper dive angle required for strafing a target in mountainous terrain, it's also gonna help ensure that we have fewer bullets land long as well as land short potentially putting friendly troops or civilians in harm's way. We'll keep an eye on our targets down there. It's all looking good. Offset a little far from the target, so I'm going to climb into it. There's 310 degrees to our target, and here comes the roll-in. Double check, master arm is on, we're coming down, 
We're still outside of range. Here come some flares. There's maximum range for our gun. I'm not liking it yet. All right, trigger down. And recover. Lots of flares out there. Just making sure we protect ourselves from any man pads. In our F-15E, you can pretty much recover from a strafing run, such as what we just did, in full military power on your engines, which will also protect you from any man pad launches that may come up at you because you're presenting less of a heat signature than having a giant afterburner plume come out. And it looks like we got pretty good effects on target there. We still got some flares left, probably wasted a few too many flares on that run. So we'll be a little bit more conservative this time. And we'll come around for a reattack. We got 260 rounds left for our gun. Should be plenty for a nice reattack here. See if we can use our targeting pod to see if we can see any more personnel down there. All right, looks like another clump down in this area, so closer to that wall on the edge of the Acropolis down there. We're just flying to reconform to our JTAX rules on our final attack heading that he wanted. Beautiful. Looking good. All right. I'm going to roll out here. So we've got a pretty good offset from our target area. And you guys can see that I waited pretty long into the maximum range envelope of our M61A1 Vulcan cannon there. And that was to prevent having bullets fall short into that neighborhood, potentially, as we're still waiting for the range indicator to be added to the F-15E. So we are in just slightly short of our final attack heading. We're in a nice steep dive angle, 27 degrees, I like it. All right, let's get some flares out there. And trigger down. And we are going to recover. And we are pulling out at full mill. No need to leave a big afterburner plume out there for a man pad to chase, especially when I'm out of flares here. And we are basically dry on our guns. Only 40 rounds left. I probably could have gotten another trigger squeeze out of there. And it looks like we got good effects on target once again. And the bad guys are running away. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it kind of showed you what a more or less realistic strafing run would look like, especially in mountainous terrain here. And uh, I'm super excited that uh, the air to ground gun is finally operational in the F-15E now. So if you liked the video and you learned something, please give a like and a subscribe. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Fly safe out there, guys, and enjoy this beautiful game.